Pam? Anything? I haven't heard from him. Steffi? No. What about you? Anything from your mother? Not a word. I can't believe he went through with it. Our, our boycott didn't work. Hey, have you spoken to Dad? No. You? No. Amaya and I, we've been doing some talking. You think we made a huge mistake? A mistake? Yes. By not going to the wedding. Granddad's the one who's making a mistake. All the more reason we should have been there for him. That's what he would have done for any one of us. Right. No question. Dad's always stood by us no matter what. What did we do? We took a stand, Thorne. We showed him that we didn't care. No. We showed him how much we care. That's what family does. He needs to open his eyes and see what a mess Quinn really is. No offense. What's, what's your plan? You thought you were going to go to that wedding and just lie to his face and, and what, pretend that everything's fine? What we did didn't change anything, Ridge. He still married her. Maybe we're the ones who need our eyes opened. We'll be there for his divorce. How about that? Or throw the biggest party the family's ever seen. Whoa. Uh, what if there is no divorce? There's what if this is it for granddad? Look, I know you don't want to believe it, but I honestly think this is it for them. Oh. Death do they part, all of it. I think it is it for her. She found an older guy with a lot of money. She's going to try to outlive him. Rich, don't say that. I don't think it's going to last. Quinn's going to show her true self, which is vicious and ugly. Sometimes it takes the person a while to see that. But we'll help Granddad, and when he does, we'll get her out of the house. That's what not going to this wedding is about. But it could have the opposite effect. See, Granddad could be so hurt that he only starts trusting Quinn. No one got a text message, right? No calls? After the wedding? This morning? Nothing. Just silence? So Dad's not communicating with us. That's how upset he is. Zinde's right. Not showing up for the wedding last night could backfire. Big time. Felicia, she's upset. She's at the airport and is about to get on a plane. Upset about what we did? About what Dad did, as we all should be. Nobody's saying he should have married her. We're just saying we should have been there. Felicia just texted me too, Rich. You heard from Dad? He hasn't responded to me. Worried we messed up. What's the matter with you guys? What is it? No one messed up. Rich, Dad won't pick up the phone. He's not talking to anyone. You honestly don't think we have a right to feel guilty? If I wasn't sure about it before, I am now. We never should have deserted our father on his wedding day, Rich. Well, it's front row seats, Charlie, but in the yellow night, yeah, I know we were in the yellow section last week, but the blue section, psh, no way, Jose. No, every time that serving wench in blue sees you, she practically throws herself on you. No. Pam. Charlie, just, just get any tickets in here. This section's fine. I gotta go. Okay, bye. New York. You're here. I can't surprise you. I work here. You know, I just, I just meant that. Well, it's the day after you, you got married. Lemon bar. Corner piece. to say I feel terrible Pam you were there you were helping to set up you were pretending to support me you were lying to my face no Eric no I wasn't I promise it wasn't like that what happened where did you go I, I went to talk to Rich I called him Rich. Yes. See, Rich and Steffi have been so worried about you. We all, the 
whole family's been worried, and so we just thought that if if we, if we staged a, a boycott, that you might call the thing off. And I might call off marrying a woman I love because everybody staged some group tantrum. We did this. This was Ridge and Steffi's idea. Well, Ridge and Steffi were just so concerned about your future, Eric. Wynn has done some pretty horrible things, so they felt she was dangerous All right, enough. and that... Get them in here. Ridge and Steffi? Yes. Everyone, anyone who's in the building who was supposed to be at my wedding yesterday, I want them in here. Now. Wow, I have no patience for this. If you guys want to be in here, wring your hands and think about what is right or wrong, you go ahead. I have better things to do. Hey, Dad, wait a second. We're just worried, that's all. I'm worried too, for your grandfather. That's why I didn't go to that ridiculous wedding because I don't want him to be with this silly woman. He's here. Eric? What about my mom? This could be a really good sign. Um, no. He's really hurt. We knew that was going to happen. It's going to be okay. It'll, it'll be all right. No, he, he's beyond hurt, Ridge. I've never seen him like this before. He's waiting for us in the office now. He wants to talk? Talk. Yell, scream, I don't know, but he wants us all to come in there right now. I gathered everyone as you asked. Ivy told us that you and Quinn were alone at the wedding. That should never have happened. Granddad, I am sorry. It wasn't our intention for you to marry Quinn alone. We just thought that, you know, maybe if we weren't there, you might change your mind. We were wrong. But look, it was a terrible, terrible mistake. And if any of us knew that you were actually going to go through with it, Eric, we would have been there, right? Yes, of course. Especially me. I agreed to be your best man. I said that I would stand up for you and I'll let you down. I hope that you can find it to forgive me, Dad. Please forgive me. We were trying to make a statement because we were concerned about you, Dad. You have to understand we did this for you. I've heard from everyone but the ringleaders. Ridge, Steffi, this is your doing, was it not? Anything you want to say, Steffi? Hmm. You're stubborn as your grandmother, and as opinionated. Sometimes I worked for her, but just as often as not, she ended up hurting the very people she wanted to help. Have you learned nothing from her mistakes? I guess not. So any regard, any respect, any admiration you might have for me, 
any of the affection. The affection we have for one another? It just goes out the window. Just throw it away. And Ridge? You're my son. And you knew how much this would hurt me. You know how much you mean to me. I've raised you, I've taught you, mentored you, I've, I've stood by you all these years. And this is what it comes to. You betrayed me. I betrayed you. Betrayed, that's a big word. What else would you call it, what you did to me? What you all did to me? You had a chance to support me. To come and witness me committing my life to another person, saying vows in front of God and family. Family. There was no family. You weren't there. We did it because of Quinn. We wanted you to see how we feel about her. And what happened instead? I saw how you feel about me. You don't mean that. Dad, you know how much you mean to all of us. I do now. Dad, please, don't say it like that. Well, how would you have me say it, Thorne? After what you've all done to me? We, we can all see now how cruel this must seem. But you have to understand how confused- Maya, I understand. I know what you were all trying to do. You were forcing me. You were trying to force me not to feel something that I feel. Try to convince me to give up on a woman who's given me nothing, nothing but devotion. That's what you're not getting. She's faking it. She's, she's dangerous. Like, Eric, Eric, it's, it's her history. Quinn has a mean streak. We were all just trying to Wait, protect a, a you from her. Wait, a mean streak? Oh. The pretty wide mean streak running right through this room right now. You know what mean Quinn said to me? You know what she did when she came down those steps to me? When she looked at that room and, and my family wasn't there. She came down the aisle toward me and she saw the hurt in my eyes. And she, she looked at me and she saw how much it hurt. You know what she said to me? She said, don't marry me. This awful, awful woman. This selfish, mean woman that you think she is, was willing to give up her happiness for mine. So I don't want to hear you say that Quinn Fuller, no, wait. Quinn Forrester is a danger to me or to any of you. I never want to hear that again. Dad, I get it. You trust Quinn, and I get why. Because she always says the right thing at exactly the right time. How is it that you're so convinced that every word that comes out of her mouth is duplicitous, that it's malicious? You can't just believe she cares about me? Look, Eric. Maybe, maybe she really does. Maybe she does, and then one day we will all come to see that. <sighs> but what we're trying to say to you is that we were worried about you. We were worried about her history. And that's... Well, everybody has a history, Pam. You have a history, too, don't you? You've got one of your own. I, I, I forgave you for that, didn't I? Yeah. You think that my relationship with Quinn somehow taints your sister's memory. But you know how many times I had to forgive Stephanie? If I hadn't forgiven you time after time, you wouldn't be standing in this room right now. 
I took you into this family, and you walked out of me yesterday. But I, oh, I don't know. What about you, Zenday? I, I took you in, too. Doesn't that count for something? Of course it yeah, does. It does. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Your mother asked me to look after you, to watch over you, and so I have. It never occurred to me that you'd live anywhere else. I'm your granddad. I welcomed you into this family. Have you ever felt anything but welcome? No. Okay. I welcomed Quinn into our family yesterday, and you weren't there. Disappointed in you. I'm so disappointed that you weren't there to help me welcome a new forester wife into this family. Why weren't you there? I mean, have you ever felt anything but welcome in this family? Okay, so I welcomed you into the family and your sisters, both of them, your mom and dad, all the drama, lots of drama. But it didn't matter because I saw in his eyes. I saw how much he loved you, how much you meant to him. So I welcomed you in. You can't see that in my eyes about how I feel about Quinn. Did anybody bother to look in my face and see how I feel about her? No. This was hateful. Neither one of you has any right to do this. After everything I've done for you. I know. You think that uh, I owe you something because you think that I favor Ridge all the time. This is, you want me to make you feel better about that. Well, it's simply not the truth. And you beg me to treat you differently than I do. And over again, you ask and ask and ask. And I give and give and give. And then I ask one thing of you, and you don't come. I don't know what to say. No, actually, I do know what to say. I'm worried. You know how many times I've worried about you? But I've always stood beside you. I've always stood with you. I've never disagreed. I ask you to come to my wedding. One thing, you weren't there. You didn't come to my wedding. We obviously have a lot to make up to you, and we will, okay? I promise you that. How, how are you gonna do that? I thought I could depend on you. I thought I could ask you to be my best man and you would show up. Why didn't you just say no? Why didn't you just say no instead of pretending to support me? I was not pretending, Dad. I wanted to be there for you. Until when? Until Ridge and Steffi talked you out of it? Dad, we, just, we all concerned. Now, you don't even know Quinn. You don't even know her. All you've got in your head about her are the lies that they filled your head with. They're not lies. We told Thorne what she does. Now, what she did. You're not telling him what she does now, what she means to me, the changes she's made in my life. Does that matter to you at all? Of course it matters. You know it matters to me. What about you, Thomas? Does that matter to you? At all? I'm a little surprised by you that you would take part in this. I thought you were the kind of guy that kind of made up his own mind. But I guess now you just kind of bought into the mob mentality. No second thoughts. I should have talked to you. Yeah, you should have talked to me. You all should have talked to me, but nobody did. Nobody did. Nobody wanted to ask the old doddering old man. He thought that Steffi and Ridge could tell everybody what was right for me. Wrong. shouldn't have been this way. Should have been a big family wedding. 
with dancing and toasts and cutting the cake and joyful speeches. Why? Why couldn't they do that for him? Because it was you, Mom. Because it was me. They made him suffer. What was that? Sounded like Eric. I forbid it! You said, remember when you said that to me in Monte Carlo? I absolutely forbid it! Channeling your, your namesake. Stubborn and strong-willed. Thank God I didn't go along with it. Granddad, you should have. I should, no, you should have. You should have asked me how I was feeling about what I was doing, how I felt about Quinn and what she meant in my life. But no, no, you just made demands. It was, it was all about you. All about Steph. Okay, that was definitely Eric. Yelling. You sure you don't want to go in there? Sevi, I understand that you have issues with Quinn. Big issues, but those are in the past. Who are you to say that she doesn't deserve a second chance? This isn't Quinn's second chance. Quinn has had millions of chances. Okay, fine. Maybe I'm like my grandmother. Maybe I'm so demanding, but I'm doing this out of concern for you because I'm looking out for you. You're looking out for me? Oh, yeah. be, oh because I'm this old man, this feeble old guy who can't really take care of himself. Well, you know what? Maybe that's a quality all of you should try to emulate. All of you, especially you. Oh, stop it. Stop it. I've been taking care of you longer than anybody else. Anybody else in this room. Just to crawl around in here on your hands and knees with a pencil marking up all my good work, drawing on it. But you were talented. I saw talent. I had no idea how much. My God. And all that talent evolved into great, great confidence. And then arrogance. That's a Maroney thing, you know? You, you and Massimo both crave being the strongest man in the room. Is that what this is about? Me taking over the CEO position again? Oh, Dad, Dad, you'd even yeah. think that proves that we were right. I think you're... St I'm what, st you think I'm losing it? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you think this proves? I'm not doing this with you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm gonna not let you berate me like you do everybody else. I did what I did because your relationship with Quinn is wrong and somewhere in there, you know that's true. She's not worthy of you. You don't get to decide that. You don't decide that, I decide that. You don't get to tell everybody in this room what they need to feel. King Ridge doesn't get to tell everybody how they feel about me and my wife. You don't control me. I control who I respect. And I don't respect a single thing about that horrible woman. Well, you're gonna have to respect her. You have to respect her now, because when I sign this, she is Mrs. Eric Forrester. I'm married now. She and I are going on our honeymoon. You will respect her. Dad, Dad, just calm down, okay? You ask me to calm down? Are you going to calm down? When all of you, all of you abandoned me like this? My eldest son pulls off some kind of magical coup and you want me to relax about that? Not, not on your life. I can't take it. I don't care if I make things worse. I can't let him face them alone. Rich, I'm not finished. Come here. When your mother died, I was by myself, I didn't like it very much. And it went on for a long time. And then Quinn came along and she made my life a lot better. I liked it. You can't change that. You have to respect that. How we're, can you take that away from we're me? We're trying to protect I don't need I, that. I want you to support me. I want you to believe in me. Do you know what it was like for me to see her look into my eyes and to see how little my family cared about me? You don't know the first thing about any of us. You made me feel alone.